Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petites and we are doing a what's in store for May. And as you can see behind me, there's a lots of color and, and flowers and we're gonna show you some veggies today and all different kinds of things. But I wanted to show you the Bougainvillea hanging baskets. Um, they're so gorgeous. This fuchsia color is the predominant color that you'll see out there in Bougainvillea. We do have a white. We also have like a coppery peach orangey color. Um, if you will, and they are just a fantastic flowering tropical again, great for, and this is the big subject today, is when our frost free date happens in spring, they really should be put out May 15th. We're always looking for middle of May before we put our warm crops out. So that includes your flowering tropicals and also your warmer annual crops, okay? So May 15th is really the key date. You always want to make sure that you are watching the evening temperatures and if they are gonna go below 45 degrees, especially if it's clear and cool out, you really wanna watch for that too, to protect your annuals, okay? So let's walk this way. Uh, the Bougainvillea are a woody vine. Uh, sometimes they can um, have a little bit of a, a thorny growth that comes off the branches. They are awesome pollinator plants. If you look past their colorful bracts on the outside, they have this long white tubular flower on the inside. And they do have a little bit of pollen, so the, the bees will go after them, but mostly uh, hummingbirds, butterflies, or moths that have longer tongues and noses, obviously. They really, really enjoy those white trumpet flowers on the inside, and that's always key. Uh, your trumpet-type flowers are always gonna be great for your hummingbirds, especially. They are always looking for a trumpet shape, especially in their favorite colors, the reds, the oranges, and so forth. So you can see the geraniums here too. You'll always see hummingbirds being attracted by uh, the geraniums as well. Okay, let's keep walking this way. Um, we have, oh my gosh, Alistomeria. I'll have um, Taylor pan over the Alistomeria. This is also known, known as poor man's orchid, but we love it as an annual. And believe it or not, if you plant them in a protected area, um, they, they tend to come back in the garden for you. So try Alistromeria. They're a great cut flower. Cut those stems. They last in vases for so long, probably about a good two weeks and keep their color. So they're, they're an awesome plant to grow. Um, sunflowers, we're just starting to see the, the start of the sunflowers come into the garden centers. This is Suncredible Saturn. When it's immature, you don't see the coloration around the eye just yet, but boy, they're gonna come up here, really start to fill out. Once they get some really good light and heat, you'll start to see the coloration, the full coloration of the plant come out. Again, these are repeat blooming sunflowers. So as they fade, go ahead and dead, dead, deadhead them, excuse me, but then let them keep going, keep feeding, keep watering. They'll do a great job for you. We have some tropical foliage here. Oh my gosh, the alocasias are out. And of course, um, alocasias are really best in kind of a partially shaded area. Um, they can tolerate a little bit more soil moisture, so that's really good too. If they stay evenly moist in the soil, you can put them out in, in sun. So be aware of those. Of course, you can grow them as a house plant over the winter, so bring them inside typically um, mid to late October, uh, but they make great, you know, thriller type plants in containers and they, they do great out in the soil as well. But wait until May 15 to plant them. Okay. And then of course, I love this one, Taylor. This is the Euphorbia. This is probably Diamond Frost. Let me just look really quick. Oh no, this is Diamond Mountain. So Diamond Mountain fills out to produce this huge mound of just fluffy white. Um, this is a euphorbia, and we have found that euphorbia are really easy as far as light conditions are concerned. They can tolerate full sun. They do a really good job in part shade as well. 
and they grow through the branching of other plant materials. So we really love them as a filler, but as a standalone pot, Diamond Mountain's really a knockout. It's really, really good. We're gonna show you, this is one of our favorites. This is Evolvulus. It's just starting to come out and really produce those bright blue flowers. So if you enjoy that, that kind of medium ocean blue, this is a great little plant, Evolvulus. It's a sort of a very low mounding ground cover spiller type plant, really good for full sun areas. And then coleus, love all the different colors when we can come out and look at the coleus. Many of these varieties, again, are gonna be very versatile. They're gonna grow in full sun to full shade. You can put them in containers, does not matter. Put them in the ground. Again, coleus is very cold sensitive. So make sure that you're not planting these until after that May 15 date. But other than that, lots of different colors. Um, again, height, there's a good variation on height with the coleus as well. And there's also trailing varieties too. I don't see them though. So, <laughs> so the height, all of the ones that have different height um, are here now. Yeah, so the osteos are here too across from uh, the coleus. And look at that coral beauty is this one. Um, Taylor likes this one. And then this is sunshine beauty, did I say? Let me just look really quick. Yeah, sunshine beauty. And it has that really pretty purple eye in there as well. So osteos, um, just so you know, obviously daisy family, sometimes they're called um, African daisies uh, for their common name. Osteospermum is their, their long botanical name, if you will. And we just shorten it to osteo. Um, lots of different colors, beautiful, beautiful. I will say that the breeding has gotten better as far as heat tolerance with these. They used to be kind of an early bloomer and then they would kind of peter out um, when it got really hot in the season, but they're doing really, really well. Good vigorousness, good repeat blooms. The tomatoes are in. Lots of customers have been asking us about tomatoes and obviously the tumbler tomato. Uh, this particular variety of tomato is really has been bred to grow in containers trail over the sides of containers. This can be dropped in a patio pot if you wish, or of course you can keep it in the hanging basket. But look at all the flower set, the blossom set on this plant, and then look at all of the fruit. And I'm gonna tip it over here because right in the middle, there's a ton of fruit development, but then also on the end branches too. It's all over this plant. Here's the great thing about Tumblr they keep going, that you keep picking, you keep watering, you keep feeding, they will keep producing for you. So they're a great, um, just kind of, a, I would say less than a quarter size cherry, um, nice bright red color, but oh my gosh, they're so productive, they're awesome. Now we're on the shady side of the greenhouse. So for those of you that are looking for some color and some interest in the shade, check this one out. So you might be aware of this plant. This is Hypoestes or polka dot plant. And polka dot plant is a great little house plant that we've we've used in a lot of different you know terrariums fairy gardens and all those types of things but it's a great showy foliage plant for shade so if you want to throw it in with your shade combos with your impatience begonias we're going to talk about next it's great so it'll work really really well there's pink there's white there's red um, so it's just a great foliage complement that you can you can add and you can add many other types of foliage house plants to your shade combinations as well so you can do things like spider plants you know the spikes that you see in the middle of many containers are just dracaenas dracaenas can grow in sun and shade and do wonderfully so um, really all your tropical foliage plants if they're kind of that medium to lower light or even some bright indirect light they can go in a shade combo no problem whatsoever these guys these are all riger begonias through this area we've got some dusty rose some oh so orange but what's great about the riger begonias 
is that, again, they make good house plants in the winter. So you can bring them out. You can definitely put them out in, again, part shade to shade. So you want shadier containers, if you will. You can put them in the ground as well, no problem. Um, they do, begonias in general like to be deadheaded. They like to be, um, you know, taken care of. So that's a good thing because the more you do that, the more it's going to produce for you. Um, but they're a great plant to grow for outside in the summer and bring them inside for your, your house plants. They're awesome. Um, another type of begonia that we grow that's very common is going to be your tuberous begonia. So tuberous begonias, a uh, real common name is um, nonstop begonias. And they have a little bit different foliage here. Um, their foliage is going to be more hairy than a Riger begonia. It's going to have definitely a, a sturdier texture to it. Okay, so a little bit more leathery, a little bit more succulent. And they are produced, the flowers that come out are gonna be larger and a little bit more doubled, more rose-like, if you will. Um, foliage colors on tuberous. There's a dark foliage color like this one, so it has more of that bronzy red color to it. And there's also a green foliage type all different colors, again, rainbow of colors with the with the begonia family, um, to be honest. But they these do really, really well. And then your tuberous begonias, you can save over the winter like you would save any of your tender summer bulbs. So um, actually, Taylor was working on a blog on it, and she's got all the information online at petitegardencenter.com. But you can just save these like you would save a canna or a dahlia tuber, so um, really easy plants to grow. And again, great for shadier spots outside. We moved out into the perennial department, so these are your plants for coming back in the garden three years or more. And we have our one of our favorites, the peony. So the peonies are just starting to bud up, just starting to show color. Um, this is pink Hawaiian coral here. Um, and you can tell, just a beautiful, beautiful coral color. And then we also have this kind of dark magenta pink, which is Paula Fay. So she's just starting to open up too. So it's just starting, just starting the peony phase and the weather is cooperating. So that's always good too. So I hope we'll, we'll hold on to our peony flowers for a while. Great, reliable shrub uh, peonies, obviously. You have your shrub peonies. You have your tree peonies, okay, um, which can get very tall in the garden, you know, three, four foot, exotic, exotic flowers and, and colors with the tree peonies, woody base on those as well. And then you have the cross between the two, which is an Ito peony, I-T-O-H. So the Ito peonies are that cross and they have the best of both worlds. They're bushy. Um, they are exotic flowering and really cool as well. So look for those too. We've got some uh, shade, those are sun perennials, just so you know. So peonies really like six or more hours of sunlight to do well. They definitely need cages, okay, folks? You wanna make sure that you're supporting those flowers. The flowers are so darn heavy on them that they will flop. Um, Itos stay pretty tall, no problem, and tree peonies, they can stay up very well because they're a little bit more woody, if you will, um, but bush peonies, you really have to support them. So make sure you put your peony rings or your cages around them so you can keep those flowers up off the ground. Um, shade selection here. So again, we've got a lot of color through this shade department and this walkway. Um, some beautiful hostas. I'm looking down, this is sage, but Sage is a large hosta, blue-green leaf, very, very kind of corrugated uh, foliage here. Beautiful, beautiful yellow markings on the side. Again, uh, large to extra large, in fact, um, fairly large variety. And then this is frosted violet or amethyst. Oh, sorry, grande amethyst. So beautiful. A uh, fuzzy leaf, so that's always good for deer resistance. Um, just beautiful kind of lavender to deep plum color on this one. And then it will start to bloom here probably in about a week or two, and you get just a creamy white bell that comes out of the top of this. 
and then it's paired with lupin and i do absolutely love our lupin or lupine however you want to say it this is a great plant for us but just remember with lupin they need well drained soil so you got to raise them up make sure that they're getting really really good drainage and if you keep them on the neutral side of your soil ph that's really going to help slightly basic is fine um, too but beautiful beautiful Oh my gosh, that, that, their scent is just phenomenal. So you have to come by and, and smell the lupin. <laughs> okay, let's go this way. Um, Taylor wanted me to show you Pink Revolution. And this plant, I don't know if we've ever showed it before, but this is a cool plant. So this plant is a cross between a foam flower and a coral bell. So Tiarella and Heuchera. So they call it hookerella, okay? And um, it, it has great foliage, very kind of fuzzy green foliage, shield-shaped, beautiful dark markings in the veins, okay? But the flowers here have been blooming for at least a month, if not more. It just goes and goes and goes. So it is a really, really sturdy shade plant. If you're looking for some color, early season, great foliage texture, try this one. It is awesome. So we moved back into the sun perennials and I just wanted Taylor to show you that the clematis are really starting to bud up and open. May is a really heavy bloom time for clematis, but again, with Raymond Evison varieties, they just keep on, they keep on going and going. Um, you know, Giselle is a, a perfect example. She starts early, but she is just a, a vigorous repeat bloomer, just kind of keeps on producing those buds, keeps on growing. Um, well, look at this new one. This is G and it's a little shorty, so it's a little compact. So this would be the one that you could use in a container garden as a thriller if you wanted to, maybe two foot on G. So, but look at, Flowers are totally open, but you have all these buds coming up underneath. So it's gonna really perform very, very nicely if you need that kind of cranberry red color out there in the garden. And then look at Bijou. Look at how cute this one is. It's got that kind of periwinkle lavender. It's starting to fill up through the trellis. Can you see that, Taylor? So that one's gonna be gorgeous too. This one, again, shorty, um, the tag is saying about 12 inches tall. So you're just going to have kind of a mounded, uh, really pretty clematis there, but gorgeous, gorgeous. And then, of course, Rebecca, she's so pretty. She's a beautiful, beautiful red. And I was just commenting that her flowers look like they have more violet in them this year or right now at this moment there's these violet stripes through there and uh, it's it's a gorgeous gorgeous plant i love rebecca <laughs> so salvias we are in the time for meadow sage or salvia it is a flowering ornamental plant in the sage family uh, lots of different colors this one's evening attire I love this deep purple. If you're looking for a very dark, deep purple, this is a great one for you. Um, and the flowers are a little bit more ornamental because the actual petal, the tubular petal, comes out a little bit longer than some of the other salvia. So it does have a really pretty ornamental effect, almost like a beaked effect on the, on the flowers. And then that would be kind of your middle of the border plant probably around 24 to 30 inches on this salvia. And then down below, think about planting Gallardia. They both like very similar aspects, well-drained soil, bright sunny areas, um, raised areas, both great for them. Um, and the blanket flower, this is um, spin top. Let's one is this one, Copper Sun. And Copper Sun, if I can show you a close-up flower, it has kind of tubular petals around the outside. So again, this could be an attraction for hummingbirds coming in, looking for that tubular flower, kind of sticking their nose in there and trying to get some nectar. So beautiful daisy plant, native plant of Ohio. Uh, again, just keep them dry. They can't tolerate wet feet. 
They can't be wet over the winter time or they won't come back. But if you get them in a good raised area, well-drained area, rock garden area, they're gonna do really, really well for you. So keep that in mind. Okay, and then we're gonna move up here and uh, oh my gosh, it's been a beautiful dianthus season. So your dianthus family is, is very big. And again, you have annual types of dianthus, you have perennial types of dianthus, you have sweet william, which is actually a biennial type of dianthus. So it grows and blooms in two years and then seeds and then comes back for you in the garden. So that's a neat one too. Um, but oh my gosh, this is our fave. Taylor and I really enjoy this one. This is called Coral Reef and it is a carnation type dianthus. So they're the same family. And these short stems, I mean, they don't grow any taller than about six to eight inches, but they make a beautiful cut flower. And I know some people don't love di or dianthus or carnations, but these guys are just gorgeous and so repeat blooming. They just keep on going and going and going. So again, sunny areas, just like the Gallardia, just like the Salvia, if you can keep them in a drier spot, well-drained, they're really gonna enjoy that. So think about that. And then I love it that Stella coupled them with a penstemon, okay? So this is a penstemon or beard tongue. And penstemon, again, are a native plant of Ohio. They, um, are a little bit taller. Most of the varieties are a little bit taller in the garden, let's say 24 inches and above. But they, some of them have really beautiful foliage texture. And this one, this one's onyx and pearls. It starts green and then it starts to develop that really pretty rich burgundy color. And then the flowers come out. They're similar to a snapdragon type look and they're they're white so it really looks beautiful the contrast is absolutely gorgeous on this plant and they're clay soil tolerant too so try penstemon they'll do really well for you they attract pollinators awesome plant we have moved out into the nursery and we are here by the lovely azaleas and i will have to say one thing for cool springs it kind of delays that that flowering that budding and flowering um, out there so it's really helped with the azaleas and the rhododendrons they are a little bit later this year but it's nice you know when everything starts to really bud up and flower everybody enjoys it so much but the azaleas are blooming right now now just to remember, azaleas really are a part sun, part shade type plant. They can take uh, a more shade than, than part, believe it or not. Um, but ideally about four to six hours of sunlight, just like a hydrangea, a macrophylla hydrangea. Um, I'm gonna have to tell you, they do great in Eastern exposure. So morning sun, evening shade, they are an evergreen. They cannot tolerate wet feet either. So you wanna make sure that they get well-drained soil, moist but well-drained. And I know that kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but it's really what they prefer. And um, they'll do so well for you, especially in a protected area because they can desiccate over the winter. So if you have a cute little corner, sort of protected area in the garden, you get that morning sun. Oh my gosh, it's their favorite place. They'll perform so well for you. Western exposure can be a little bit hot for them. So make sure that you're watering and make sure that soil is still draining for them. Um, love the bright reds. This is hot shot, beautiful again, tubular flowers so the hummingbirds love them and i think a lot of people don't realize hummingbirds are going to forage in the shade just as much as they do in the sun as long as you have the right colors to kind of bring them in and attract them and the right flowers as well so beautiful beautiful azaleas i wanted to show you a really good azalea companion this is Mountain Fire Andromeda or Pieris, uh, Pieris Japonica is what we call it. Um, but Mountain Fire, it is, this is an evergreen plant, okay? So leaves are always on it. It, when it, when it starts growing in the spring, it produces red foliage, which is absolutely gorgeous right now. And you can see it's kind of softer and red. It starts to kind of mature if you will so it turns this copper color when it starts to mature and then it finally turns green 
it's just such a cool plant. It has sort of an amorphous shape when it grows up in the garden. So it can get anywhere between three, four, five foot, um, but it can be pruned. And it also has a spring bloom to it. So maybe I'll have Taylor show you a flower, um, but it's almost like a lily of the valley type white bell that hangs off in clusters or in panicles. Um, but it's such a great plant, so cool. But again, part shade, okay? So you've got a lot of options here for some color, especially early spring. Okay, everybody, we moved further into the nursery and now we're in sunnier plants, if you will. So we're by the roses and we did wanna show you some of our rose trees this year. So this is a sun blaze rose. It's called autumn sun blaze. And it is a beautiful, deep, deep, deep um, coral, almost orange color, beautiful. These are, so I should tell you, sun blaze roses are miniature roses but they're along the lines of the same breeding as knockout roses. So very small, compact habit, very, very cold hardy, really great as far as disease resistance um, is concerned. And um, they are just grafted on top of this tree topiary here, but repeat bloomer all through the season. Now, these plants are ready to go out on the porch or patio, six or more hours of sunlight for roses, of course. You always have to have really, really good sunlight for roses. Um, I will have to tell you, very easy maintenance and care. All you have to do every once in a while, you can go ahead and deadhead, you know, just water, fertilize, no problem. And then end of the season, like really November, the leaves fall off, you're gonna take this pot and you're gonna put it in the garage, the garden shed, um, any cool, darker place, okay, where it can be surrounded and protected, and it will do wonderfully for you. I want you to water it once a month over the winter, and that's basically it. When it starts to leaf out in the garage, go ahead and move it out slowly in the springtime, um, you know, mid-April through mid-May, just kind of get it acclimated to the weather, and you'll be ready to go. It, they're such easy roses and they're so beautiful, lots of colors. So we have autumn, we have a, a bunch of different colors, but I wanted to show you this one. This is Sweet Sun Blaze down by my feet. And Sweet Sun Blaze obviously is a beautiful miniature pink. What I'm gonna tell you is those flowers, the fragrance in the flowers are phenomenal. She has a beautiful, beautiful scent. So look for this one if you like that sort of medium to blush pink. She's really a gorgeous one. And again, same family, just bush right here, tree right here, okay? Great plants to plant with your roses. How about a viburnum, okay? This is Birkwood viburnum. This is actually a, a mohawk variety, okay? And um, you have leathery, fuzzy leaves, which are great for deer resistant, really, really fragrant flowers. You can use these for cutting. Um, it is one of those plants, viburnum, we like to grow them everywhere. Sun, shade, they really do their thing for us. They produce uh, fruit for the birds and flowering in the springtime, fall color typically for most of their foliage. So. It's a great, easy growing plant in this area. So, so think about viburnum if you need, you know, they, get, they can get big. So if you need a shrub for a natural screen, some privacy, a backdrop, what have you, they really um, can grow in a lot of different areas and be used in a lot of different areas in the garden, okay? I also have a little boxwood here. So this is Green Mountain. It's always good to put a little evergreen around with your, your flowering plants and you'll always have something to look at here year round, but um, they all grow really, really well together. And that's basically our uh, what's in store for May. So come out and see us and enjoy. <laughs>